Hi everyone, welcome. I'm assuming that this is one of the first videos um, that you're going to watch. Um, so I hope that you're excited about kind of learning how we do things and uh, having a little rehearsal. I'm going to try to keep this short but pack it with as much information as I can. So we're not going to get a lot of playing or repetitions in. I call them reps. Um, we're not going to get a whole lot of reps in because it's just going to be a lot of me talking. Um, if you don't have a pen or pencil and a, a piece of paper or just something to take notes on, then pause right now, go get that stuff, and come back and be ready to take some notes. Um, okay, so I'll let you pause it here. Okay, so uh, assuming that you went and got something to write with, and on. Um, welcome back. Uh, so I'm just going to start talking about the fundamentals exercise sheet. Um, if you're looking at basic exercise sheet, um, then that's an old file. Um, so if you're looking at that, you need to go back into the Google Drive and look for the one called the fundamentals exercise sheet. Change it up a little bit. So looking at line A, um, you know, we just have a lot of eighth notes on the right hand. All right, so we're gonna do our typical eight and you're in. Um, if you're not familiar with that process, then you need to stop this video and go into the Welcome and Rehearsal Basics playlist. Um, you can take that down as a note if you're confused and get someone to help you, but um, just go into the channel, search under playlists for Welcome and Rehearsal Basics and there will be an, a video about eight and you're in. So um, hopefully you've gone and watched that video at this point and you can come back and be ready to actually do some drumming. So uh, we'll probably just try and leave everything at about 80 beats a minute um, for today. Should be nice and comfortable for you. Uh, not doing anything too difficult. We might slow it down to draw your attention to some things in a minute, but all right. So on A, right after you come up and you lift, the thing about the lift is you don't want to lift too high, right? That's the main tendency from everybody when they start doing this kind of lift is to lift way too high and then you, you're unable to play the notes after that first note equally loud. So if you'll notice, all these notes have accents over them, so they should all be played at the same dynamic. And so you want to do a small lift, okay, just enough to when you turn your hand on the way down, that is the bead position that you're shooting for now, strictly from the wrist without raising the hand. So the only notes uh, that you raise the hand for are the initial ones on the hand, okay? So let's play A, and I just want you to notice that I don't lift way up here. I just lift a small amount, and then once my hand comes down to play the first note, the hand stays down and just turns. The arm no longer comes up. Okay, so um, some things to say. Obviously, we did eight and you're in. Lifted on beat four just before playing, didn't overlift, kept the hand down, and then just turned the wrist all the way through. Now, something else you're want to, you are going to want to think about is the left hand and what it is doing, or most importantly, not doing. So while you're playing with the right hand, your left hand should just be still, right here, about maybe an inch above the playing surface. Okay, so if you start playing, hopefully you're practicing in front of a mirror. If you're not, you should try to do that. Um, if you don't have a mirror, maybe talk to your parents about just getting a real cheap mirror, putting it up on a shelf or something, just where you can see yourself play. That's super important. Um, but just while you're playing, that that hand is down, and that it doesn't start to creep up or out or just do some like weird thing while you're playing. Okay, so 
Um, this one, most of the time, aside from that initial lift being too high, the second um, most likely problem is that your other hand is doing something funky. Okay, so let's try it one more time. And this time we're gonna loop it, okay? So that's not talked about in another video, but when we loop it, that means that the release note where your foot stops um, and then you put your hands down, uh, that starts the next eight counts of the next tap off. So your release note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So that last note that you play starts beat one of the new eight count tap off, okay? So we're gonna loop this, um, we're gonna play it twice. Five, six, seven, lift. Pay attention to that left hand as well. And typically in a rehearsal setting, I'll call last time and uh, I'll explain in a minute what happens then. I don't want to get too bogged down in procedure just yet. Okay, so uh, we've talked about the two main things that happen in this. Um, another thing that can usually happen is uh, folks will kind of just put a slight emphasis or accent on each downbeat. So instead of a straight across, da, 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 it'll sound like da 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 right so you just want to make sure that it's one continuous volume all the way through um yeah i think that's pretty much for that one um let's play it one more time and as you play it uh try to think about those three things or maybe four so you got that quarter note lift that's not too high it's just a small lift to get some potential energy built up. As soon as you drop the hand, it's kinetic energy and you turn from the wrist. Uh, now, in these strokes, these are called rebound strokes. So you don't want to play it like this where you're holding the bead down in between. See how it's kind of herky-jerky and you see my bead stop down there, right? Um, you want to play these loud, but you don't want to me bang drum, right? So that means either you're holding it down in between or you're pumping the arm for all the notes. So you don't want to lift the arm for all the notes and you don't want to hold it down. You want to lift the arm for the first note, turn from the wrist, and with each stroke, you let it come back up, okay? You, you allow the rebound to occur. You don't hold it down. All right, so these are rebound strokes. So uh, let's play it once just you guys uh, or gals um, thinking about that, just letting it rebound and not holding it down or pumping the arm for all the notes. Five, six, seven, lift. Okay, so to kind of uh, recap here, You've got a small lift, okay? Once the hand turns and comes down, the hand stays down. Then you continue to allow the stick to rebound while keeping this hand low to the, to the head, about one inch above the playing surface. Um, making sure not to pump the arm for all the notes. Also, don't accent the downbeats and um, put a quarter note at the end of each of these lines. Okay, so you'll notice at the end of each line it says which hand to release with, okay, or to end with. So in this case, it's all rights and then it ends with a right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so, um, so you'll end with a right and down. Um, that was just to save ink on the page, not having to put a quarter note and you know all this rest. So it's just kind of understood that you're playing the line uh, you're not really playing it all the way down as written. 
Okay, so that all, all that is A. So um, if you didn't write any of that down, then you might want to rewind it real quick. And for each of these letters, you can just put A, you know, and these are the things to think about for A. There were like five or six things. So then what you can do is I call it form, focus, practice. And what you'll do is you'll play it maybe four or five times thinking about one individual thing. Uh, you might take a, a short break or play something else and then come back and play A and think about the second thing on the list. So you don't really want to try to think about multiple things at once right now. You want to look at one aspect of your playing as you're going. Um, and eventually, once you can kind of set those on autopilot one at a time, then you can focus on putting like the first two together and then three and four and then five and six. So you start to pair these together and then you work on putting those pairs together. Okay, so eventually you're kind of thinking about six things at once, but really it's just, it's all muscle memory at that point, but you've got to build that. So please don't try to focus on a million things or you're just going to spin your wheels. Focus on one focus at a time. That's why we call it the form focus rehearsal. Okay, so that's A. Um, B is going to be pretty much B, <laughs> pretty much B, uh, the same stuff. Just if I had said something about the right hand in A, it's going to be talking about the left hand in B, and then vice versa. So uh, not a whole lot to say about B. Let's just play it a few times. So we're just going to loop it. And then I'm going to call last time, okay, at one point. And when I call last time, it'll be when the sticks are down. What you'll do is continue to mark time, bring the sticks up, and then you always hit the release with a loud right hand, regardless of what we're playing. So I call last time in the middle of silence. You come up, and even though we're typically playing the left hand on B, you would come up and just play a loud right hand note. Okay, every time we call last time, it's a loud right hand. Cool. Uh, so let's do B. Five, six, seven, lift. Last time, five, six, seven, lift with the right hand, and down, okay? So that's the, the last time thing. So if, I, if we're ever in a live rehearsal, and I call last time, or I throw my sticks up like this, or if I don't have sticks, I might do like this, um, that just means you're going to come up and play that, that release, and then down. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I thought of another thing that you can, you can also add to A, uh, but it applies for B as well. It's just that on the hand that's playing, you don't want to, in order to keep the hand down, you don't want to open up the back fingers in order to get the stick to come back. Uh, if anything, you want to do the reverse and kind of grip a little bit more with the back fingers and loosen up up front. So you want to keep all your fingers on the stick you don't want any flying off. Uh, you also don't want your index finger or your thumb off of the stick. Everything's on the stick. Um, and you're just moving the whole hand, right? So this is a, a wrist, a turn of the hand via the wrist. All right, so like 95% of every note that you will play for West Springfield should be played from the wrist and by the wrist. About 5% of the notes are some kind of arm. So I think, you know, when students typically see me, they see bigger motions and, and that stuff, but the motions are actually smaller than they look. It's because I'm getting a, a turn of the wrist 
uh, that the stick looks like it's moving a lot more than maybe it actually is. Hopefully that makes sense. So, I'm um, not going to play any more A and B. I've made my points. Now it's up to you all to practice those points uh, individually and show up if we have in-person rehearsals. Uh, show up to those rehearsals uh, prepared with this information and hopefully having practiced it. Um, the people that show up um, that continue to get better and improve, and we see that, they're going to have a higher chance of winning whatever spot they're interested in. Um, those that maybe started out pretty decent, but they're not going anywhere, um, might not get the call to play that instrument. Okay, so it's just important for everybody to actually put in some time and energy into actually getting better um, because we'll choose those people that uh, see more improvement. Okay, so C. Uh, all right, so sorry, it's written so small, I've got it kind of far away. Um, so this one's eight on a hand, all right, so we're gonna mix up some weird mechanics with this one. Again, I know I'm talking at you a lot. If, you, if I start to lose your attention, pause it. Go, like, get a drink of water or a piece of candy or something and come back. Um, don't just, you know, kind of just tune out. I need you to be involved in, uh, in this information, okay? So at any point, if you need to take a break, just pause it. You have that ability. And you can also rewind and, and listen to stuff again. So, uh, all right, so in C. Uh, eight on a hand, right? So we've been doing eight and forever, so now we know how to play eighth notes on each hand. Uh, so the same thing applies. When you're playing with one hand, the other hand needs to be inactive. Uh, however, remember that quarter note prep idea, right? How we come up and then we lift on beat four to play. Uh, we're also going to do that here um, with the non-playing hand. So while this hand is playing, this hand starts to lift. While this hand is playing, this hand starts to lift. Um, in order to be down in between, the last note on the hand has to be held down. That's called a down stroke. Okay, so you've got one, two, three, lift down. One, two, three, lift down. One, Okay, so I call that the up-down transition. Up refers to the hand that is not playing. So you start to lift the hand, and that's the up, right? Uh, so if I'm playing on the right hand, the left hand starts to go up on beat four. Now, the down of the up-down is after this hand starts to move up, the last note on this hand is held down. Okay, so that's the one, two, and three, and up, down, one, and two, and three, and up, down, one. Okay, so the up, down, the up is talking to one hand, and the down is talking to the other hand, and it switches depending on which hand you're playing. Okay, so I'm going to slow this one down, actually, to demonstrate the up, down transition, and we're going to play it at 60 beats a minute. And I'm just going to play it once and uh, call a last time, and we'll come up and hit the last note, and that'll be that. Five and six, seven, left. One, two, three, up, down. One, two, three, up, down. One, two, three, up, down. One, two, three, Two, three, last time, five, six, seven, lift, down, two, three. All right, so hopefully that makes sense as far as what I'm asking for in the up-down transition. Um, other than that, uh, all the, the things that you should look for are the same as A and B. And you're going to find that in this fundamentals exercise sheet, it's kind of that way. You start out with a concept, and the next one you just add a little layer, right? So as we move down the sheet, we're adding a few little more simultaneous mechanics happening um, to get the proper musical sounds and the look that we're going for as we play. Um, so you've got A, B, C. Uh, C, you're concerned with the up-down transition primarily. 
Um, so let's play through that at like 40 beats a minute. And we're just gonna do the same thing just once. I know it's really slow, um, but most people do not get this up-down transition very well um, because they try to play it too fast too soon. Okay, so let's just all play it at 40. And again, like I said in A and B, you don't want to overlift. That's the biggest problem in C, even more so than A and B is like, you, you know, people kind of figure out how to do the eight and forever and it all sounds fine. And then you go and you add the up down transition and they start whacking that first note on each hand, right? So it's a small lift, but we're going so slow that it's a lot of time, right? So if you have a lot of time to just lift a certain distance, then that means you need to go a little slower over that time to cover the same amount of distance that you usually would. Okay, so like I said, I know it's really slow. You guys probably jumped the gun on a good bit of that stuff. So if you need to, go back and rewind it and try to move with me. You know, don't just say like, oh, I missed it. Oh, I put my sticks down early. Oh, I started market time early. Oh, I was thinking about the eighth note was the quarter note or, you know. So just go back and make sure that you can do it right. Okay, otherwise there was no point and purpose in that, that time that was spent. If you can't do it right, then you just shouldn't move on. Alrighty, bumping it back up to about 80 beats a minute. So, um, this one, D, is um, actually played pretty well, usually, because like I said, the tendency is to overplay the first note of A, B, and C, and in D, you actually do play an accent into lower notes. Um, the problem with D is usually that the low notes are played too high. Okay, so the purpose in this one being, just like in the other ones, after you lift for the first note and you come down, the hand should not pump up and down. The wrist should turn. And in this case, it's turning for very small notes. Okay, so it's just a small wrist turn, uh, a small hand turn via the wrist. So you lift for the accent and then drop the hand. The hand stays down and you play very soft notes without pumping the arm, okay? So, not gonna talk too much about all that, just make sure that you're not pumping the arm on the taps and that the taps are soft. Um, when I use the word tap, I generally refer to the any note that is unaccented. So a tap is an unaccented note, usually. All right, so let's just play D. Three, four, five, six, seven, Lift, down, tap, 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 lift, down, tap, 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 lift, down, tap, 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 lift, down, tap, 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 lift, two, three, last time. All right, so when I call last time, if you missed that stuff, go back and try it again. That's the whole thing, like I was just saying, um, you are what you repeatedly do. So if you think that you're good, but you repeatedly mess something up, then maybe you're not that good at it, and that's fine. But it just means you have to work, actually work at it. So um, another thing that I thought about as I played D is the other tendency is while the other hand starts to lift, um, sometimes that hand that's playing crescendos. So instead of you get
right? You hear how that kind of built up into the accent? So we don't want to do that. We just want to play one clear accent and some taps. And while this one's still playing low taps, this one raises. All right. So uh, let's play D one more time, just maybe considering that aspect of it as well. Okay. I know I didn't call last time. Uh, we need to save some time. So, um, what else was I going to say? Oh, uh, we also don't want to do what's called puppet drumming, or what I call puppet drumming. Um, and that's when you lift the hand, you don't turn the hand before you come down and you just bring it down like that, like it's a straight line across. That's like how a puppet would drum, right? Like you're doing like that. So you want to make sure that you bring the hand up and you leave the bead down as you're doing that. So you don't want to lead with the bead. We don't do that really at West Springfield. Uh, we lead with the hand um, and it's called molar, M-O-E-L-L-E-R. Um, and I'll explain that. I think I explain it in the history and grips playlist. So if you're interested, go into the history of, of rudimental drumming and I'm pretty sure that I mentioned the man named Moeller in that. But, uh, so, you raise with the hand, but then before the hand comes down, you turn the hand via the wrist so that the bead points to the sky, in this case. So you don't want to leave the stick horizontal and come down. When you come down, right before you come down, you want to point the bead to the sky, okay? Um, so you need to practice that on your own very slowly um, before you move on. Uh, some people think about it as painting a wall. It's that kind of emotion, right? Um, so anyway, just any little bit that can help out. All right, so that's D. Um, e, all right, so for this first note, we lift on beat four like we usually do, but instead of playing some more right hands, we start with low left hands. So you will not lift the left hand to play that first tap you'll simply turn the hand from the wrist. All right, so you got to lift and the, leaving the hand down. Um, then on the last eighth note of each measure, you have the lift as you're playing the note or immediately after. All right. So in everything up to this point, all of our lifts have been quarter note oriented. We lift four, one. In this one, you can't do that because you're playing taps. Uh, throughout beat four. So what you have to do is play four and, and as soon as you're done playing that and, you start to lift, uh, do a quick motion up. Okay, so let's play that one. Lift. Last time. Okay, so I'm, that was E, I'm pretty sure. Yep. All right, so um, you got that eighth note lift right after you play the tap on that hand, and then uh, that goes into an immediate downstroke. So what you don't want to do is, right, where I didn't control that back down after I played the accent. So it's a up, down, immediately downstroke so that while you're playing the taps on the other hand, this note is just chilling out right there where it's supposed to be in playing position. Okay, so let's play it one more time and um, just watch your hands and make sure that you're not doing what I talked about. And after you play that accent, you don't want this floating out into space. You want everything kind of controlled. Five, six, seven, eight. Lift down. Lift down, lift down, 
with down. Okay? So again, I know I didn't call last time. Um, so yeah, the, the lift is very fast. So you're gonna temp, you're gonna be tempted to only turn the wrist for that accent, but we need a lift of the hand, okay? And we need not only a lift of the hand, but we need for the hand to initiate um, and not to lead with the bead, but lead that motion with the hand. So you play that last note, and then instead of going play, lift the bead, you go play, lift the hand, and then the bead stays down on the way up. Okay, uh, F. So, uh, F is the same as A, but all you're doing is accenting the first note of each measure. So we're getting a lot of upstrokes in one hand. So not a lot to say about F other than this gives you an opportunity to check in to the non-playing hand again because we've been kind of switching back and forth for three or four lines here. And what we want to do is check back in and make sure that while we're continuously playing with one hand that the left hand isn't doing something weird. And then when we go to line G, we want to make sure that when the left hand is going the whole time that the right hand's not doing anything weird, okay? Um, so some of you might think that F and G are actually easier than E. Uh, that's probably going to be typical of this. So um, reason being, you're not switching back and forth between right and left, so it's mentally a little easier to kind of think about what's going on. So uh, let's just play F one more time just to make sure that if you're practicing along, um, you're thinking about the left hand while you play the right. Okay, so uh, the only other thing that I really have to say is, you know, we've talked about not pumping the arm up and down or pumping the hand up and down while you're playing these taps and stuff. That still applies to this. So you might be tempted in, the, in this quick upstroke into the downstroke into the taps. You might be tempted to just start turning the, the elbow, <laughs> you know, for every single note. Um, but you don't want to do that. You just want to isolate all these motions and you have that upstroke leading with the hand and do a downstroke and then the hand stays down and you play these small taps right back into upstroke down. Okay, so the only hand motion is that up, down, um, and then you just turn the hand via the wrist for the other taps. All right, so let's go to G and do the same thing but switch the hands. Okay, um, so the only other thing that I can really think about uh, to say about F and G is that um, you might have that tendency to pulse the downbeats, uh, especially down low. So you might find yourself going... or something like that. Um, so just make sure that you're not pulsing the downbeats. Just da 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 right? Um... Another thing that I can say about A, B, F, and G is um, anytime you have like a one-handed thing that goes for an entire line, you can, after you've worked it out on individual hands and you're kind of confident that you've gone down your list and you've kind of checked off and made sure that you're doing the appropriate things, now what you can do, especially once you start paying attention to what your fingers are doing and how much pressure you have, how much sound is being produced by one hand or the other. You don't want your right hand to be you know, louder than your left or vice versa. Um, you can play it 
uh, with double stops. So double stops is when you hit uh, the drum with the right and the left hand at the same time with the same amount of sound. Okay, so this is not really a double stop. Double stop would be that or and I'm not sure how much you can hear uh, via this device video stuff, but it makes a, a different character sound than a typical note. You got constructive, destructive interference happening, and it actually makes kind of a popping sound if you hit at exactly the same time with the same volume. Um, so some frequencies are kind of boosted and other, inter uh, other frequencies are, are toned down because of how they interfere with each other. Um, so, uh, if you're doing a double stop correctly, it will sound kind of weird. Um, so, you can do these um, one-handed lines with both hands. So, you know, A would just be... So on and so forth. Uh, F would be... And so... That takes a lot of focus as well, um, because if you're moving a little differently or you're playing with a different sound, then you're going to get these sounds where ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, and that's not good. That means one hand is hitting ahead of the other one, or maybe one is louder than the other. Um, so I had a couple of those when I just played that last thing, if you rewind it and really listen. Uh, okay, so now we're talking about H. Okay, so this kind of puts it all together of what's happened to this point. You've got the quarter note lift to begin with, and then you've got these eighth note lifts, a few of them in a row with one hand. And then to switch over in the middle of the line, you switch to the other hand, uh, there's a quarter note lift there while you hold these down. So um, I'm going to slow this one down to about 60. And I'm just going to verbally kind of talk through as we're playing it um, the difference in the timing of these hand lifts. Okay, and don't let the release on the right hand catch you off guard. So right at the release of the line, you have another quarter note lift with the right hand while you're playing with the left. So hopefully that, that concept kind of makes sense as to how we're mixing all that together. Obviously all the stuff that I've said to this point about the two height um, lines where you have accents and taps as far as lifting the hand and then keeping the hand down for certain things and all that, all that still applies. Okay, um, you're just changing the timing of the lift, whether it's an upstroke or whether it is a preparatory motion or initiation of the next hand. So that's how that one goes. We'll play it at 80 beats a minute just to speed it up a little bit. So you'll notice I'm marking time through all these. Marking time is that whole marching in place thing. Um, something that you're going to want to add to the list of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all, you know, everything that we do is to pay attention to what your feet are doing in coordination with your hands. Um, so the first thing that should happen, I haven't even talked about it yet, but the first thing that should happen is your feet should always be with the mat. If um, you start playing, and then you discover that, oh, my feet are moving at a different time than that thing is beeping, um, that's not good. 
So the first thing that you need to address is your feet. And if it's getting in the way of your hands, then what you can do is kind of put the sticks down. Don't think about all the mechanics of what you're doing and uh, focus on the feet, but maybe just play it, you know, with your hands. Get the rhythms, get the heights, and then once you get those basics down, start worrying with the timing of the lifts and all the stuff that we've been discussing. Um, if you still can't get it, you might need to slow or speed the metronome up, depending on what your problem is. Because when you talk about a mark time, if you slow it down really slow, you start running into balance issues. And you might have seen some people like almost fall over while they're playing because they can't mark time slow. Um, so one tip for um, if you are marking time slowly and you're having balance issues, um, instead of trying to think of it like a flamingo, where like, this foot is on the ground, so this foot's going to be up in the air. Uh, maybe don't do that and just keep both feet on the ground as long as you can. Um, so it would be like one, lift, two, lift, one, lift, two, instead of like one, lift, two, lift, one, lift, you know what I mean? So just keep both feet on the ground for a little bit longer when it's slow. Okay. Um, so A through H is what we just did. I, um, I, I, Captain. So in I, you're playing 16th notes, right? And this is alternating sticking, um, which is going to be the basis for something else later that we'll call natural sticking. I just wanted to throw that term out there, um, and we'll explain later what that means, but your basis for it is alternating sticking, um. So, uh, in this one, you know, you can read above each one of these lines and it describes what is happening in the line. Um, so this one talks about how it's a double prep to initiate. And what that means is on that quarter note beforehand, uh, if it's I, you're going to lead with the right hand and the left is going to trail. Okay, um, so that quarter note, you're not really going to lift both at the same time, um, but they're almost at the same time. So it'll be one, two, three, four, digga, 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 digga. Okay, um, so this one will be real obvious if you've been playing like A or C or B with an accent on each hand, this one will be real obvious because you hear da 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 right? So you want to make sure that whatever you lift and play as the first notes that you sustain that. So we are going for a an energetic loud sound in these with rebound strokes and with the hand staying down. Alright, so let's play I. So the last two notes are going to be downstroke, da 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 down. Okay, but when you play those downstrokes to to end the hands down, you don't want to play those with any more force than you played all the other notes. So you need to play with energy and intensity all the way through while still rebounding and being relaxed, so that those last notes don't poke out when you downstroke them. So let's play it again, just thinking about that. And down. All right. So um, the next thing that I want to talk about with this one is groove. And I think if you'll really listen closely, the last time I played it, I rushed the first measure just a little bit. Uh, and then I had to hold the energy back, and then it kind of settled. Um, you don't want that. You want to play perfectly in time from the first count. So um, what you don't want is this. Right? I mean, from a gross G-R-O-S-S -S perspective, 
uh, it was all kept in time. But when you look at each count, I rushed some and I drug some, and that's not good. So you want to subdivide before you play, um, and internally think one e into two, three e into four, da, 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 and keep it in that speed. Okay. So uh, the big things on this one are don't overlift the first notes. Uh, subdivide before you play so that you start out playing perfectly in time and then play loud enough through the whole thing so that when you play the downstrokes at the end they don't pop out from the texture. Okay, so moving right along, um, another thing that uh, we'll switch to J, since I and J are basically the same thing, we'll just do the same thing, but we'll start on the left. Uh, the next point that I really want to make about both of these uh, numbers, or letters, is that you don't want to pulse the beats, like I was saying it with some of the earlier exercises. So it'll be pretty obvious, you know, if you're putting those pulses on there. You can do that at first, just to make sure that your each count is not being drug or rushed. Uh, but as soon as you can, get that pulse out of there and then aim for the same sound. Something else that might uh, be happening is one hand can be louder than the other, right? Um, or uh, in that case, I was had a higher stick height with my right hand, um, but in another case, you might be playing with the same stick height but still getting a different sound. And that's speed of the stick or what we typically just call velocity. Um, means basically the same thing. Uh, but even though I was raising the sticks to the same height, I was playing this one with a faster stick, so it was sounding louder. So that's partly why I also put J in, so that we're starting with a different hand, and usually when you start starting things with the left, then that'll kind of pump the left hand up into equalizing with the right. Um, so. Uh, but when you play it off the right, make sure that you're not overplaying with the right. All right, so J, let's do J leading with the left, thinking about all the same things and trying to really listen to the sounds that we're making and make the sound the same between the hands. I think I've talked enough about those things. Okay, um, so K, right? You've got, I think this one's gallop. Yes, all right. So kind of just structurally talking about what's happening in gallop. In the first two bars, you've got four diddles on the right hand and then four diddles on the left hand. Those slashes through the notes, that is called a diddle, D-I-D-D-L-E. And that means that within that space, you play two notes. So instead of an eighth note, um, you're going to play uh, two sixteenth notes on the same hand. Okay, so if there's an R below that slash, that you'll play two right hands there. If there's an L, then you'll play two left hands. So make sure that you're not singling it, which is where you go right-left to play the two notes. you got to keep the two notes on the same hand, and that's called a diddle. So, in gallop, the first measure, you diddle the right hands. The second measure, you diddle the left hands. Let's just do the first two measures. I'll slow it down to 70. So on the page, you see eighth notes, but where those slashes, you should really hear one E in, two E in, three E in, four E in, one and a two and a three and a four and a one. So make sure that you're aiming for actual rhythm. Right, right, left, left. Okay. 
So, unpacking this a little bit. Um, on beat four, you start to lift the right hand. On the and of four, you start to lift the left hand. So it's kind of like I and J, where you've got both hands lifting, but one leads the other. But here it's actually timed out. So you got one, two, three, four and. Okay, so this one trails the other one by an eighth note. So that's the first thing, is you've got two arm lifts, but then, just like in most of the other ones that we talked about, as soon as the hand comes down, it stays down, and the, the wrist turns for all the notes, and you let it rebound. So after you do this lift, like the sticks are in this position like 95% of the time in this. So notice when I play it, I'm not playing it like this, where most of the time the sticks were down, as soon as I start playing it, they're up like this. Okay, and this is super strict, okay? Um, I like to teach it this way, to teach the strict motions and make sure you're rebounding and using all wrist. And then later we get to talk about some little gray area that might happen, especially as we speed it up um, where it's not that rigid and it doesn't look like a robot. But I need for, to see you all play it that way so that I know that you understand a strict rebound and wrist turn with these notes. Okay, so uh, let's do those first two measures again and make sure that you try to do the eighth note difference between the lifts. And then once the hand comes down, it stays down and you turn the wrist and the sticks stay up most of the time. Five, six, seven, lift, lift. Okay, so yeah, I should have ended down, I guess. Uh, all right, so the next two measures um, instead of a full bar of right hand diddles, you have a half of a bar. So you've got four right hand diddles followed by four left hand diddles, sorry, two, right? Yes. Uh, so you got two, 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 stop. All right, so let's just play measures three and four. So you see how it's kind of two count phrases instead of four counts. Uh, if you need to, rewind it, hit the like back 15 seconds button or whatever and play it a few times. Uh, so now let's try to put measures one through four together. So you got four counts, four counts. Two, 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 stop. So now, the next two uh, measures are just one count of each, and I think you do it like eight times it switches, so um, one, two. So it just goes from right hand diddle to left hand diddle like four times. You, you do the switch um, from right to left. Okay, so let's just do uh, the measures five and six. And then the last two measures are just straight diddles. Um, so in this whole um, line, you should notice that your right hand hits with every downbeat, okay? So 
Um, when you're talking about the mark time and you're playing along with it, if you find that you're separating, you know, your hands from your feet and the met and all that, first thing is get the feet with that. Then practice it without the feet and just get the hands. And then practice it with your feet, but without sticks in your hands. Okay, just getting the rhythms and the patterns. And then get the sticks in your hands and try to, to get it all happening. Something else that will help you uh, work on the mark time is if you're practicing in an area without carpet. Uh, so if you can get on wood or concrete or whatever, turn your mitt a little softer and then put something that will quiet your pad so that what you want when you're working on the mark time stuff is for the sound of your feet to be equal to the metronome and equal to what you're playing. So right now, you can't really hear my feet because I'm on carpet. You're hearing the metronome and my playing. Um, but if I really needed to work on my feet, I would get on a surface and coordinate those volumes so that I can hear all three equally. And then when my feet separate, my ears, you know, the alarm bells go off and I, I know that I need to change something. Cool. So let's play the last two measures of Gallup. I know I just went on a tangent there. I apologize. Hopefully it'll help some of you, though. Last two measures of gallop. Straight diddles. Make sure to keep the right hand on the downbeat. So this really, if it hasn't confused you already, this is where the sound usually really starts confusing people because you're hearing 16th notes, but your hands are moving in 8th note patterns because you're playing two notes on each hand. So the tendency for some people um, is to start singling the notes. So you start playing uh, like letter I or J right here where you're, you're, play, you're alternating the 16ths. And that is completely different. You gotta play diddles and you gotta move the hands in eighth notes, but sixteenth notes are coming out. All right. So if you need to, slow it down, um, break it down so you can throw it down. All right. So let's do the uh, measures five through eight now. So we're doing the second half only. So another thing that might help you, um, just throwing some stuff out, you can write it down or not, and you can do it or not. Um, but if that whole sound 16th notes versus 8th note motion is really kind of throwing you, then you can put one hand on, on the rim or on the edge or the stand or a table or whatever you're allowed to do. And that way you can hear the difference between the hands more readily. Right, uh, and then you, when you do stuff like that, you want to make sure and also reverse it. So if you do it with your right hand on another surface, eventually, you know, once you kind of figure it all out, you'll put the left hand on the other surface and try and figure it out that way. Uh, of course, with the metronome and moving your feet and all that kind of stuff worked in there eventually. Um, so with Gallup. Overall tendencies, once people figure it out and they're just kind of able to get through the exercise without stopping, we call that breaking. If you are in the middle of an exercise and you mess up and you stop, that's called a break. So we don't want to break. Um, but once you can get through it with your feet going and without breaking, typically the problems are pinkies flying off the sticks, gripping really hard up front instead of using the whole hand. Um, and another issue is that right hands start to, to be loud, so. Something like that. Um, another thing that happens is either people accent the diddle and do like this. Or. 
Or some people do the opposite. They go. So I guess, you know, I could challenge you all and say maybe you should try to work up those variations and just understand that they are variants of the real way to play it. So you would practice all the right hands accented, and then you would practice all the left hands accented, and you would practice all the diddles accented, and you would practice all the undiddled notes accented. And then there are they are distinct things in your mind so that when you go to actually play just the stock exercise, you can really focus on that sound just being totally constant, okay? Because you'll notice all these have accents over them. And another thing you can do is play it all soft. So just pretend like there aren't accents on it and see if you can play it all at piano uh, without any hiccups in the sound. Okay, uh, again, just throwing out some ideas. This is not a repetitions video. This is a like rehearsal uh, best practices video to help you all know what to look for as you're kind of doing this on your own. Okay, um, I, <laughs> I left L on here. I really thought about taking it off the sheet. It's pretty advanced, um, and I'm not really going to ask L, probably, unless we get into like a tie break situation or the line's just looking really, really good in the spring, and I want to challenge you all. So I'll play it. Um, and I guess the main things that you want to look out for is that you don't raise the grace notes, aside from just getting the timing right. So when you play a right, if it has an R under it, that's a right flam. And that means that the left hand plays first, but that the left hand is really soft. And you don't lift it. Um, you just drop it from playing position. So instead of like these taps we've been doing at about three inches up, um, hopefully these grace notes you'll really want to play at about one inch and it's hard to do so when I demonstrate it you might notice that I lift a little bit in which case I'm just I'm not doing the right thing so <clears throat> um, so yeah on a right flam the left hand plays softly first and then the right hand plays a loud note um, the name flam is how it should sound so it, you don't want it to sound like a unbalanced double stop where it's just one sound. You also don't want it to be two completely separate sounds. Right, so you've got grace note space. That's what we call that. It's the space in time between the grace note and the primary stroke is the loud note and the grace note is the small one. Um, you want to control the space in between the grace note and the primary stroke such that it sounds like a continuous sound, but there's like a slight separation, right? So a correctly played flam should sound like this, flam, flam. Or, okay? So you wanna get the grace note as close to the primary stroke as you can without touching it. That's how my first teacher uh, taught it to us and that's the best way that I've ever heard it explained. Get that grace note as close as you can to the primary stroke without touching it. Okay, so let's try L. Um, the requisite uh, skills for this um, is like basic eighth note triplet timing and a mastery of upstrokes and downstrokes. So there's a lot going on in this.
Okay, so I think I waited too long to put my hands down at the end. So I should go back and practice that after I turn this off. So hopefully I haven't bored you guys too much. Um, L, hopefully I didn't lift my grace notes too much. Um, with that, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't have a mirror in front of me, but I'm sure if I go back and watch it, I'll find that I lifted some. And you also want to make sure that the loud uh, primary strokes are even from the hands so that the right loud notes aren't louder than the left loud notes, so on and so forth. So I hope that this just kind of gives you all uh, enough information to go down the page and know what some of the main problems are that I see from beginner students that are that are working on this. And by beginner, I mean the people that haven't looked at this before. So you could have been playing for 10 years before this, um, but if this is your first time looking at this sheet, um, or the first time that you're hearing it explained, then you are a beginner um, in my mind because you probably haven't heard some of these concepts that I've been talking about with motion and everything. And that's the thing about this page. It's, it's not whether or not you can get through it <clears throat> and play what's on the page. It's how the notes are played. So, um, you know, that's another point that I want to make as far as the audition is concerned is in terms of seeing improvement in students and how we are concerned primarily with that. Um, it's not just like, oh, I can get through, I can play all the notes and it sounds like accents and taps and whatever, but if you're pumping the arms or if your fingers are flying off the stick or you're lifting it at the wrong time or whatever and you're not improving in those ways because you think you're too good or whatever the situation might be, I don't know what the motivation is or the lack of, but um, it's how these notes are played that is the most important thing about this sheet. So I look forward to meeting those of you that I haven't met. I look forward to seeing everyone. Uh, I look forward to playing in person eventually with everyone. And uh, I wish you all the best in your, in your practice to get ready for this. Thanks.